If you're a fan of Lemmings, you most likely know about the somewhat recent mobile game by Exeunt, Lemmings Puzzle Adventure. It's a pretty drastic departure from traditional Lemmings gameplay, almost like a modern Lemmings Chronicles, but a little bit less janky. As such, it's pretty divisive, to put it nicely, among the greater Lemmings fanbase. While I personally think the game deserves a bit more credit than it gets, that's a story for another day. You see, Lemmings Puzzle Adventure isn't the only official Lemmings game released for mobile phones. If you watched my previous video, you already knew that, but for those who haven't, there was a small series of Lemmings games released for J2ME-enabled mobile phones in the mid to late 2000s. You won't find much footage or discussion of these games online, just a reviewer article or two buried in page 5 or something of a Google search. So naturally, I'm going to talk about them, going over their somewhat interesting backstory, their in-game stories, and their gameplay. Our story begins in 2004, when leading mobile publisher iPhone, that's iPhone with an F, signed a multi-year agreement with Psygnosis, which at this point had already been absorbed into Sony and rebranded to SCE Studio Liverpool, but was still commonly referred to as Psygnosis. This agreement gave them exclusive rights to the Lemmings franchise on wireless devices in Europe and North America, which they were soon to make use of. For their first project, iPhone worked with developer 8-Bit Games, good luck finding any information about them with a name like that, on a conversion of Lemmings 1. You know, to go with the other 30. Oh, no. iPhone CEO, Morgan O'Rahilly, had previously worked on Lemmings Revolution, and according to GameSpot, many of Revolution's designers worked on this conversion in one way or another. Throughout development, iPhone touted this game as a faithful conversion of the original, though they also admitted that some concessions needed to be made to make the game playable on the mobile hardware, such as reducing the max number of lemmings on screen, making the levels smaller, and adjusting the graphics for phones with smaller displays. They also mentioned how much they'd had to tweak the controls throughout development, trying a bunch of different methods before settling on one they thought was true to the original mouse control, but still had shortcut keys and other functions to quickly switch skills or select lemmings. The base game was only to have 28 levels, but iPhone hinted at the possibility of downloadable level packs as well as a multiplayer mode in the future. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. The J2ME version of Lemmings was first released in the UK on March 25th, 2005, making it the first Lemmings game released in nearly five years, and was subsequently released in the US of, in August of the same year. Let's take a look at the game and see how well they did. So first thing to mention is the different resolutions the game was made for. Some have graphics that are the same resolution as the original, while others have half-res graphics for smaller screens. Most play in portrait orientation, but some play in landscape. For reference, I'm playing the 176x208 version, which has the high-res graphics and plays in portrait orientation. This particular version also has a few of the speech samples from the original, though you have to choose between them or music. There aren't many gameplay differences between the different high-res versions, but the low-res versions play significantly worse. I won't go into detail, but it ain't great. The 28 levels are split into three ranks, fun, tricky, and taxing, with the taxing rating being locked until you complete tricky. So right off the bat, I gotta say, I really like these new lemming animations. They have a lot of character to them, and are generally pretty well animated. In particular, I love how the builder quickly slams down bricks, and I love how the blocker stands there with his arms crossed like a bouncer or something when he's not turning lemmings around. The only complaint I have about the animations is that the animations for traps are completely unmodified from their original versions, and thus, use the original lemming design. As you might expect, it doesn't look so good. Being a J2ME game, the music is MIDI-based. In fact, this game directly reuses some of the midis found in the Windows version a decade prior. Well, Windows midis aren't bad or anything. But there's also only seven of them here... I, I don't know, it's a little weird. Also, the music stops when you pause the game, and even worse, it goes back to the beginning when you unpause. Totally not annoying. All the levels in this conversion are from the fun rank of the original. Since there are only 28 levels, exactly two of the fun levels are missing. You could probably already guess that the Shadow of the Beast special level is one of these, but the other is just a completely normal level that I can only assume was covered being too big? I don't know. 
You might think this version would be mindlessly easy if it only contains the original fun levels, but for one, you really can't make a very hard game for a mid-2000s mobile phone and expect people to enjoy it due to the general clunkiness of phone controls. And also, the game is relatively hard anyway because the physics just aren't very good. Firstly, most skills work a bit differently here. This isn't inherently a bad thing as long as you make sure the levels still work with the new mechanics. And sure, the levels still technically work, as in they're possible to beat, but several of them become incredibly frustrating with these mechanics. And honestly, it's not even the big changes that sour the experience. It's the little things, like builders not turning around after hitting a wall or ceiling, or some skills not being assignable to a lemming performing another skill, or the selection priority when hovering over a group of lemmings prioritizing walkers and not lemmings performing a skill with no way to change that. Sh like that is what's going to make you have to restart the level more often than not. So much for a faithful conversion. One thing I do have to give this version credit for, however, is the lock-on feature. Technically, this isn't a new feature. The Spectrum and Amstrad conversions over a decade prior included this exact feature, but it hadn't been seen since, and it's quite possible that 8-bit games thought of it themselves, and the similarity to the Spectrum and Amstrad versions is merely a coincidence. But anyway, this feature locks the cursor under a specific lemming, and skills can only be assigned to that lemming until you move the cursor. This is a really nice feature that should be in many more lemmings games, but here it serves as a way to at least mitigate the whack selection priority. Just not fix it entirely. Oh, and there's no fast forward feature here, because of course there isn't. So as you can see, iPhone's first foray into the lemmings franchise just wasn't great. It's playable enough, but some moments are far too frustrating for all the wrong reasons. But, as you recall, iPhone had plans for more Lemmings content, with more levels and multiplayer gameplay being distinct possibilities. Of course, things didn't exactly go as planned. In 2006, iPhone was acquired by Glue Mobile, giving them the exclusive wireless sites to Lemmings that iPhone was set to have. It seems that Glue Mobile wasn't as enthusiastic about holding the rights to Lemmings as iPhone was, as they didn't do nearly as much with the IP as iPhone intended to. They never developed any sort of multiplayer Lemmings game, which is a shame, since multiplayer Lemmings can be quite fun, and Lemmings games with multiplayer modes are few and far between, with games that get it right being even fewer. They didn't abandon the series, however. Instead of steadily releasing more downloadable levels, they released a bigger game in late 2006 called Lemmings Return which is essentially a newer equivalent to Oh No More Lemmings. It featured 28 more levels, with most taken from the later ranks of Lemmings 1, a few taken from Oh No More Lemmings, though reskin with Lemmings 1 tile sets, and a couple made from scratch. Let's see how this one holds up. So you know how I said this is essentially a newer Oh No More Lemmings? Well, humorously, it has the same problem as Oh No More Lemmings. The first few levels are mindlessly easy if you have played Lemmings, and they don't really teach you anything if you haven't. The game then gets quite a bit harder very quickly. Honestly, the difficulty curve in general isn't that great. You'll get entirely trivial levels, sometimes taken directly from the tame rank of one or more Lemmings, right between levels from the original Mayhem rank. The few original levels all fall into this mindlessly easy category as well. It's great. The mechanics are slightly better than the last game, but not by much. Builders now build at a more sensible angle, and there seem to be fewer places where climbers just won't climb a wall for some reason, but all the other annoyances are still present. The graphics are basically the same, the music is the same, and the controls are the same. Honestly, I don't really have much to say about Lemmings Return. It's, oh no, more Lemmings, except it feels more like, oh no, more Lemmings. Fast forward to 2008. Glue Mobile still holds the rights to the Lemmings franchise on mobile phones and they decide to do something a little more ambitious for the next Lemmings game. Instead of porting a game or rearranging a game, they decide to make a completely new game, an entirely original game called Lemmings Tribes. Yeah. So, in case you're watching this video without knowing much about the series, in 1993, a proper sequel to Lemmings was released, known as Lemmings to the Tribes. It introduced 12 different tribes of Lemmings, which became a core element of Lemmings lore for like two years. Since the mid-90s, the 12 tribes have essentially been forgotten about, with nothing so much as a passing mention in almost every game since 3D Lemmings. Hell, the only game after this one to mention tribes at all is Lemmings Puzzle Adventure, 
where they serve no purpose other than to be loot box cosmetic items and to unlock extra difficult bonus levels. This game is an exception. This is the only game in the so-called post-story era to be specifically about the tribes. Well, about three of them anyway. The classic tribe, of course, the medieval tribe, and the space tribe. Now, to be fair, this game doesn't have much of a story itself, but it does at least give the tribes different personalities, so to speak. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So, uh, I think these summoning animations kind of suck. They almost look drunk and overall they're just really low quality. A couple of the animations for the new skills have some charm to them, but that's it. The game also uses the Team 17 Lemmings design in some context for some reason, even though it just doesn't match the main game Lemmings at all. I don't know, Lemmings themselves just don't look great. In true Lemmings fashion, all the music is in the public domain. Specifically, it's all classical music, with the menu in each try having a different tune. I was pleasantly surprised when the Classic Tribe didn't just reuse a Windows MIDI. The Medieval Tribe plays Ride of the Valkyries, which is just amazing. And the Space Tribe plays the same tune that Lemming 2's Space Tribe theme was based on. Each tribe also has two different variations of its theme, a more orchestral sounding one, and a more goofy sounding one, chosen at random, which I kinda like. Except, when you bring up the pause menu in this game, not only does the music stop and restart when you unpause, it also randomly decides which track to play AGAIN. Now, the game does have a way to pause that doesn't suck to music, but to access the fast forward feature they added in this game, you need to do it through the pause menu. It's so annoying. At least we get music and sound effects at the same time now. This game runs with, honestly, a pretty neat idea when it comes to how the tribes are handled. Different tribes have different skills unique to them and them alone. Now. Lemmings 2 kinda did this, with the classic tribe being restricted to the original 8 skills, and a couple of the other tribes having one or two really situational skills unique to them, but this game takes a lot more advantage of that idea. Predictably, the classic tribe is once again restricted to the original skills, but the medieval tribe has three additional skills unique to it, and it alone, Icarus Wings, Shimmer and Fencer, and so does the space tribe, Bazooka, Jetpack, and Magnabooter. If you've played Lemmings 2, you might notice that two of those skills require the dreadful fan in that game. Don't worry, there's no fan here. The Icarus Wings is basically just a very high but not very long jump, and the Jetpack is a long but low jump. Since this is an original game, it consists of brand new levels designed by Glue Mobile themselves. And, uh, they're not great. So, first off, this a completely pointless tutorial section that only teaches you the classic skills, and not the new skills that way more people won't know how to use, and the classic tribe has its own tutorial levels anyway. Beyond that, the difficulty curve is just non-existent. Levels didn't really get progressively harder. It was more like most levels you barely had to think, and occasionally you get a hard one where you need a eureka moment to figure it out. There are a few clever tricks in some levels that are satisfying to figure out, but they are few and far between. Most other levels are either forgettable or frustrating. There are a few too many one lemming levels where you just have to get the lemming to the end. Which can be fun, but it's not that easy to make a good one. Though this one in the space tribe with the magnet booters and the teleporters is actually pretty clever. Some levels look like they could be interesting, but they have horrendous and obvious back routes that pretty much skip the entire thing. On the other side of the coin, you have levels like this. So, you have to use a bunch of bazookers to blast through this extra thick wall. If you've played Lemmings 2, you might think that's trivial easy, but of course, the bazooker doesn't work like it did in Lemmings 2. Oh no. The blast radius is much smaller, meaning that if you make a lemming make a bazooker tunnel directly, it won't actually be able to enter it because it would be too high on the wall. So what you actually need to do is send one lemming over the steel wall with the magno booter and make him blow through the wall, since the floor on the other side of the wall is lower down. Of course, it's still not that simple, because the bazooka projectile flies in an arc, meaning that if you take your shots too close to the wall, the tunnel will be too high on the wall again, and if you do it too far from the wall, you'll end up blasting underneath the four lemmings you're standing on. This means the one lemming needs to shoot from a pretty specific spot, a spot you will only find through trial and error, and if you miss time more than two or three shots, you just need to nuke the level to start over because you gotta basically get just enough to blast through the wall completely. 2022, year of the bazooka, everyone. This feels a lot like Lemmings 2 level in the worst possible way. Speaking of levels feeling like other Lemmings games, 
There are a few very blatant rehashes of levels from Lemmings 1 and Oh No More Lemmings. If you've played through Lemmings 1, I bet you'll recognize this level immediately. Same for this level if you played Oh No More Lemmings. Except they made it easier because you can just make everybody a climber. So Gloomobile didn't even design enough underwhelming levels to fill the game. They had to borrow some. The physics here aren't great, and they're kind of ambiguous, but they're not too annoying and they work fine for the levels here. The only offensively bad things about the physics are that builders sometimes won't build at all, even on mildly uneven terrain, and how unbearably slow bashers are. They bash through literally two pixels per second. It's agonizing. Also, the lock-on feature can only be turned on via a toggle in the pause menu, which is obviously inconvenient. But of course, subpar physics and controls don't really matter when most of the levels aren't worth playing anyway. As much as I like some of the ideas this game brought to the table, the overall package is an underwhelming, forgettable experience. I remember very few of the 47 levels I played, and most of the ones I do remember aren't remembered for a good reason. The highlights were quite good, but they're just not enough. I don't know how much longer Glue Mobile held the exclusive wireless rights to Lemmings after the release of Lemmings Tribes, but in any case, they didn't release any more Lemmings games after it. It's a bit sad. In a way, what happened to Lemmings on mobile phones? As subpar as iPhone's first effort was, it seemed that they had big plans for future Lemmings content. A multiplayer mobile Lemmings game sounds really cool, but these plans seem to have been considerably dampened with Glue Mobile's acquisition. I don't know for sure if the acquisition is what slowed down mobile Lemmings production or if it was something else, but as far as I can tell, it seems pretty likely. With a lack of activity from Glue Mobile, the series fell back into dormancy. A quick and dirty port of the PSP version of Lemmings 1 for the PlayStation Mobile service, the PS Vita exclusive Lemmings Touch, and Lemmings Puzzle Adventure are all we've gotten since. And if the slower and less substantial updates are any indication, that last game seems to slowly be approaching the end of its life as we speak. I don't think the franchise would have been significantly impacted by a few more Lemmings games on 2000 mobile phones. But maybe it would have been, and even if it wouldn't, more Lemmings games still would have been nice to see. Nevertheless, this is the story of the Mobile Lemmings games. A series of three releases for J2ME phones, with legal rights changing hands in between, and a fourth game for modern phones a decade later. Thanks for watching.